Hi, my name is Michael. I'm a photographer and videographer that does a lot of different things. I go from portraits to landscapes to street photography and even product photography. And in the past four years of my career, I've been using the Fujifilm system. And this has ranged from point and shoots to more entry level mirrorless cameras. And now I have the Fujifilm X-T3. So I have quite a lot of experience in both the photography and video side of Fujifilm and this video is going to be about the camera settings that I personally use and that I rely on the most. So let's get on with the show and go through it all. Before I really confuse you, let me just state that yes, each Fujifilm camera has slightly different settings and options available and the XT3 is the top of the Fujifilm range at the minute so it has the most options and the most capability. But most of the basic settings, the ones that, such as the colors, the picture profiles, the adjustments that you make, what format you shoot in, they're going to be across the board. So just spend the time with me and hopefully you pick up a tip or two. So let's start. In the first image quality settings, I always shoot in large 3 to 2. This is the biggest format that your Fujifilm can shoot and it uses the full sensor. This is very important. You can always crop afterwards. Image quality. I change this between different things, but nearly always I use fine plus raw. Film simulation. I dabble between a few different film simulations. I've been loving Pro Reg High as well as Classic Chrome for the longest though. Classic Chrome is the one that I'm currently using at the minute. I'm just quickly running through the other settings on screen without going into them because it's clear to you what they are. The next one is a point of controversy. For the highlight tone, shadow tone, colour and contrast, it will depend on a picture profile and your personal shooting style. I've done test shots in all of these different settings and these are the ones that I've kind of settled on and that work really well in my editing workflow. So, highlight tone plus one. This will basically bump up your highlights. It will typically not overexpose them but will give you really nice sharp highlights. And then, shadow tone plus one. I like this as well because I like the more contrasty dark colour. Bear in mind if you go minus 2 you'll get the most dynamic range but if you're shooting raw it doesn't really matter. Colour, just because it saves me a lot of time in editing, I do plus 2. Fujifilm has amazing colours and you should always just appreciate that. And sharpness, and this has changed since last time. I used to have it as minus 1 or 0 but now recently I've been using plus 1. I've been really loving the effect and the just straight out of camera image output. It's fantastic with JPEGs. Noise reduction minus two, the camera shouldn't touch noise reduction. The whole brain behind the camera is not as capable as any computer or any editing software such as Capture One or Lightroom, so don't leave your camera to do the noise reduction. This is a super important one. Long exposure noise reduction. Have this as off. A lot of people get this wrong and I do really recommend to have it off always. Now moving into the second menu which is the autofocus, manual focus settings and let me get this straight to you. These will change depending on the shooting scenario that I'm in, depending whether I have client work, let's say macro photography, I have product photography or if I'm doing something like shooting my family or let's say fast moving sports or animals. But recently for just regular street photography and out and about photography that's pretty much zero stress, zero hassle. I always use the smallest zone and that works really nicely for me. If you're working with subjects that move a lot less, use single point. That's going to be the most accurate and it's going to be really fast once you select your point. As well, if you're doing some really fast moving from let's say left to right, like an animal going across your screen, use wide. Each one of these will have different amount of focus points but I found personally that the, the zone 117 focus points to be spot on for me. I don't really need the 425 that the Fujifilm XC3 offers. Out of focus mode all, and this is just for the convenience of going through all the settings really quickly. It saves me a lot of time. And these are my custom settings. You can change them to whatever you like but these on screen are the ones that I like. Out of focus eliminator, I have that as off just for the reason of convenience and makes it more discreet. I always have eye auto on. It's so important and the Fuji system, especially the XT3 with its new firmware update, it's insane. Auto focus and manual focus on. This will let you overwrite the autofocus and 
fine tune it with manual focus. Manual focus assist, there's a bunch that I really like. I really like the focus peaking at high in red or white, but recently I've been loving them whole digital micro prism. It's so easy to manual focus with the Fuji from XC3. It's actually faster than some of the other Fuji from lenses and it's just phenomenal. The rest of the settings on this page are pretty standard, so touchscreen area, that's just personal preference. Shooting settings is where you'll get diversion depending on the type of sport and the type of shooting that you do. So if you go into drive settings, bracket settings, these are the ones that I love. It works really nicely and I've used it a few times and got phenomenal results with this. Then high speed burst. I change this every now and again. I found that 11 FPS to be phenomenal. It's usually way more than enough for what I do. But bear in mind that a Fujifilm goes up to 30 FPS with an insane buffer so you can shoot that for really long. And that's amazing if you're trying to capture that one moment. Let's say someone just doing a backflip and you're trying to capture that one expression. It's so good for that. I have used that before and it's really good when you need it. No speed burst, you can choose what you want. I like this one. This next setting is one that's really important in my opinion. It's the shutter type, so let's have a look. You have so many shutter types on the XC3 and as you can see on the screen, some of these are limited to different shutter speeds. The one I like is the very last one, E front plus mechanical plus electronic and that basically optimizes the shutter depending on what the camera's shutter speed is. It gives you the most flexibility and it's, it's what your camera should be in. Like I'm serious, if you don't have this on, do it right now. IS mode, okay. This is what you guys need to understand. If you have continuous, let's say you're just moving your camera up and down. That will give you image stabilization. But in the second option, shooting only, when you're moving your camera around, you have no image stabilization. And when you half press it, that's when the image stabilization will kick in. And that's why I found to be the most useful it's photography and video. It's the quickest and it's just super, super smooth. And it also saves battery life, so have that on. And then there's a few other settings that I change out every now and again. Now, this is my favorite part of the video. It's actual movie recording settings because the Fujifilm X-C3 has phenomenal just output. It can do so many amazing things. Like, wow, it's, it's phenomenal. There's a lot to dive into, so let's start. Currently, this is limited by my computer, not being able to edit 4K, but I like 17 to 9 aspect ratio, 24 yeah. FPS, and at the minute I'm using 100 megabits per second. I found that to be nice for color editing and it's a nice amount of info without completely bogging down my computer. This is just a standard one that I would use. I would not go below these settings if you want a nice, nice picture. Another one that I absolutely love is the 4K 16 to 9, and you can change the settings. You can even shoot to 60 FPS at 200 megabits or 24 FPS at 400 megabits. It's hard to like beat these settings. Realistically, I would love to shoot in H.265. It's 10 bit color internal on the SD card. It's unheard of across the whole industry. But my computer doesn't support it, so H.264 is what I'm using now. And the image output is still phenomenal in my opinion. Maybe compression, long gap, it seems to be fine with me. High speed recording, I actually have this as a custom button, a function button, and I typically use the 24 FPS 120 film simulation. In my opinion, there are three options. You can shoot in Provia with a tiny bit of tweaking in the highlights and shadows and get really nice output straight out of camera. You can shoot in log format, which you'll have to manipulate and convert that to, let's say, Eterna or something, but you have the most dynamic range. Or what I do is I shoot in Eterna, which straight out of camera gives a really nice film look. But if you just bump up contrast a tiny bit and saturation, maybe play around with highlights and shadows, you can get phenomenal image output. One that is just really nice. I absolutely love it. Dynamic range, I leave that at 200. And these are my Eterna settings. Movie autofocus mode is always set to area. Autofocus custom settings, these are recent ones that I figured out because I've had some issues and these seem to be the most smooth and just give you that rack focus effect. It works really nice in most of my videos. Of course, you want face detection on 
it's so good. My focus assist is peaking. Focus check now, and then these are similar settings. And this is my secret sauce. Always shoot in movie silent control on. And the reason for this is, I do not need to change my actual photography values. You know, the shutter speed, the aperture, the ISO, and all. I can leave them at their values, and when I go into the movie mode, it has completely different values. So I always have a shutter speed of 1 over 48. The aperture, I change that depending on the scenario, and if I'm using, let's say, a variable ND filter. My eyes, so I try to do it as low as possible. And there we go. Those settings are always there, it's always cemented, and I don't need to worry about it. It's just amazing, it saves so much time, and it's one of the keys if you're trying to be like a vlogger or a hybrid shooter where you just bam bam bam, few photos, quickly turn into video mode, take a quick recording, go on with your day. It saves amazing time. So please, put this on. Of course, you will have to use the touchscreen to change the settings, but the touchscreen is that really responsive in the XC3, and you can like maneuver around in different positions, so it's really useful as well. So I'm pretty much done with the main camera settings, and I'm quickly just going to go into the button and all settings, and just show you what my settings are currently. And yes, these are my personal preference and work really well with my workflow. That's why I'm only going to keep this super brief, but yeah, you might pick up a tip or two and just use these in your own workflow, so. I think this is going to be the extent of this video. I have covered everything that I needed to and really just dived into my personal settings. Of course, as I mentioned at the very start, these depend on what scenario I'm shooting. But the settings I've described are the most basic ones that I always rely on and always fall back on. So take them as you will. And one other thing, always turn off sensor cleaning. It doesn't do anything, it literally just vibrates the sensor a tiny bit and just moves the dust around. If you're trying to clean your sensor, actually like use a dust blower or sensor cleaning swabs. Don't bother with the sensor cleaning, it wastes so much time. Yes, the camera such as Fujifilm has burst mode and a few other settings and these will need to be optimized and used when necessary. But if you're just walking around, you don't need to use them. It's as simple as that. I hope that you found this video useful and it kind of explains the whole fish film system because believe me moving from my XA2 which is used to record this video to my XD3 has been a huge leap in both quality and settings and I did really need to dive into the manual read a lot of tips and tricks and just figure out how to use my XD3 to its full potential so yes thank you for watching if you have any questions any queries just drop them down below Till next time, bye.